Hey, what's going on out there, everyone? It's Brandon here, ready for another volume of Check This Out, where I'm going to be talking about some records that I think are fantastic and I think you should check out and listen to. Uh, before I get into that, it's been a little while since my last video, and mostly the reason for that is that I just have not been buying a whole lot of records lately. Uh, I've just been keeping busy, doing my own thing, and coming up, there's not going to be too many more videos coming because I'm going on tour again. Not with my band, Night Fear, but I'm going out with my very good friends in Blame God. We're meeting up with Noisem out on the West Coast. Uh, we're going to be out there for a week. We're going to be gone for three weeks total. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I have posted the tour dates, and I'll continue to do so and post show flyers and whatnot. So if you live in the area, I mean, we're doing, you know, Chicago, Colorado, up and down California, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, uh, three dates in Texas. Uh, you know, if you live anywhere in the U.S., there's a good chance we're coming near you. So come out to a show. Have a good time. Uh, but, you know, other than this video, I'm going to try and squeeze in uh, the most recent Metalhead box if I receive it in time. But, uh, you know, this, this one's going to be dedicated to some real heavy hitters, some albums that will without a doubt be on my top list of 2018. And before I get into these records, uh, one thing that I have been thinking about is whether I want to do a top 50 like I have done for the past two years. Um, it's a lot of albums, it's a lot of work. Um, I've been thinking about narrowing it down just to a f top 40, so not, you know, nothing major. But I'll leave it up to you guys, you know, you're the ones who watch these videos. If you still want to see a top 50, I'll do it. If you're okay with, you know, narrowing it down to 40, having it be a little more, more like cream of the crop, I'll do that too. Uh, just let me know whatever you guys want to see, and I will make my decision based on that. But without further delay, let's talk about some fucking sick records. This is the new Archgoat album, The Luciferian Crown. Fantastic album. At this point, you know what you're going to get with Archgoat. Blasphemous, blackened death metal. Um, I don't like the argument of whether Archgoat is, you know, a death metal band or a black metal band. To me, they're they're a black metal band, but they have some obvious death metal, um, you know, notes to them. Some obvious death metal influence. Uh, to me, it's a pointless argument. I don't really care. <laughs> uh, this just comes on black vinyl, but it comes with this outstanding booklet here with lyrics band pictures, um, some excellent art from Chris Moyen, awesome, awesome presentation with this album, with the gatefold and the huge booklet. Uh, do I really need to say much more about this album other than it's finished black metal at its fucking finest? Um, if you liked previous Archgoat releases, if you like really any of Archgoat's music, I don't see why you would dislike this. Um, fucking outstanding album. I love it. I've listened to it a lot. This one took me a couple listens. You know, the first time I listened to it, I remember not knowing what to think, but once it really sunk its teeth in, I was along for the ride. I fucking love this album. I've listened to it nonstop since I've gotten it. This is Infernal Coil, titled Within a World Forgotten. Uh, this was released by Profound Lore Records. Uh, this is their debut full length. Um, they're a band from Boise, Idaho, believe it or not. Not a lot of bands from Boise. Just the black vinyl version. I know there were a lot of very cool variants on this one, but uh, like I said, I kind of slept on this one. Uh, it didn't immediately impact with me. God damn, there's something about this album. It is just a non-stop, ferocious attack. Chaotic, grinding death metal. Uh, tracks Wounds Never Close and then Continuum Cruciatus. One-two punch just leaves you fucking winded. Like, you just... Those two tracks in a row, you don't know what happened to you. Straight up. And then to Crusher of the Seed, my favorite track, 49 Sons. The longest track on this album. Has that sort of ambient, melodic outro to it. Uh, and then 
body set in ash and death and in silent vengeance to close out this album what a fucking trip uh it's a little bit over half an hour it makes for excellent repeat listens i find myself coming back to different songs different sections each time i listen to it um god if i if i were to try and compare this band to any other band I really wouldn't know where to start. I mean, uh, there, there's elements of like that frenzied, chaotic approach that you get with a band like Revenge. There's an unhinged, uh, you know, feeling of maybe a band like Full of Hell. Um, and then there's the death metal approach to it with, you know, the deep growling vocals uh, that just bring you to like an old school kind of vibe but it's so fresh it's it's very modern sounding it's uh if you can't tell i'm having trouble describing it but um all i can say is that if you're looking for something extreme if you're looking for something fresh new different if you're looking for something that is just totally going to pummel you into submission listen to infertile coil within a world forgotten and then one of my most anticipated albums of this year from some buddies of mine. Here we have Outer Heaven with Realms of Eternal Decay. Their debut full-length record on Relapse Records. I've been hearing these songs live for a while now, so I knew what to expect. But even that didn't prepare me for how utterly devastating this album is. Absolutely fucking phenomenal death metal from Pennsylvania. Um, I've played with these guys a few times. Uh, like I said, they've been playing a bunch of these songs live for a while now. But hearing the recorded versions of these is just an absolute treat for the senses. Much like this colored vinyl. Uh, this was the one I was lucky enough to get, uh, the one limited to 100 copies. But, yeah, I mean, this has to be one of the best death metal records you will hear this year. I know I'm biased, but even trying to set that bias aside, it's, it's way up there. Uh, you are doing yourself a, a major disservice if you like death metal and you haven't checked these guys out yet. Um, tracks like What Lies Beneath, Pulsating Swarm... Echoes from Beyond, my favorite track on here. Uh, Blood Spire, Putra Dwelling. This has got it all. It's got the stomps, it's got the grooves, it's got the heavy fucking mosh parts. Like, this record is fucking phenomenal. Please check out Outer Heaven, please. And then another death metal release that I was eagerly anticipating and certainly did not disappoint. Hyperdontia. I think is how you pronounce that. And this is Nexus of Teeth. Uh, brilliant fucking artwork from Paolo Girardi. Hyperdontia as members of Undergang, Wormridden, Frenolith, <clears throat> all that good shit. Uh, Danish death metal uh, vinyl released by Misako Unoho, otherwise released by Dark Descent. Just black vinyl on this one. Comes with uh, standard inserts lots of teeth going on fucking wild art direction on this one and uh musically just as rowdy i mean this is oh man what a fucking record i mean the first time i put this on it just it hit right in the chest like there's certain albums that when you listen to them and it hits you right fucking here and you just know it and you're just going, oof, oof, take me for a ride, baby. Uh, God damn, I love this album. Nexus of Teeth, Hyper um, One, the I think the, the main thing that I love on here, aside from, you know, the riffs and the, the songwriting and all of that, is the production. The production is so cut and dry. There's not... You know, there's not a lot of polish on it. Uh, there's no, like, triggers. Everything sounds very natural. And uh, you just don't hear a lot of, you know, modern records produced this way. At least, that's what I feel. And um, it just 
it just adds to the whole vibe of this record and uh, it really is a delight uh, this one I'm not gonna spend too much time on but it is a very popular release so far by a very polarizing band I feel like and uh, I'm talking about behemoth and this is I loved you at your darkest um, not a fan of that album title um, when they initially released the single God Equals Dog, I thought that that song title was kind of lame. And the song itself didn't grab me initially. But, you know, upon its release, I was hearing a lot of good things from, you know, people whose taste I trust. You know, we have this kind of uh, see-through orange vinyl. It was advertised as gold, so I thought I was going to be getting a gold vinyl, not a transparent orange, but I really could care less. I just thought that the gold would have looked nice. But anyways, back to the music. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things on here that I really don't like, and that is um, the young girl choir sort of chanting that you hear in the opening track, Solve, and then in the single, God Equals Dog. Uh, did not care for that at all, and I still don't. Although it doesn't, you know, it's not going to ruin the album for me. I just, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, one thing that did catch me about the physical release was the artwork uh, in, in this booklet and everything. I thought it was fucking brilliant, honestly. And um, it makes this album feel like a true work of art. Which is the, the, the feeling that I got listening to the entire album all the way through. I feel like a lot of these songs are incredibly strong, incredibly well-written songs. Uh, I'm talking about songs like <clears throat> Ecclesia, Diabolica, Catholica, Bartzabel, If Crucifixion Was Not Enough, um, Rom 5-8. Uh, there's just a lot of great songwriting going on in this album. Uh, they feel like very complete songs, very well written. It's obvious that a lot of work was put into them. I love the vocals. I love the lyrics. The lyrics are fantastic. Um, if you don't like that kind of like satanic, blasphemic type of lyric writing, then you're not going to like this. But to me, I definitely, I can relate. Uh, I find them very interesting to read. And... Um, you know, I'll just say, to finish this off, that I think this is a very good album. I don't think that it's The Satanist Part 2. I don't think it is as good as The Satanist. But I do think that it is a good album. It is worth listening to, at the very least. Uh, and I'm happy to own this. I think the packaging is absolutely incredible. And um, I think it's a very nice piece to add to my collection. So that's Behemoth with I Loved You at Your Darkest. This just came in today, uh, released a couple days ago. This is Bloodbath, The Arrow of Satan is Drawn. Uh, it's got this nice kind of OBI strip going on. Uh, the record itself, printed inner sleeve, just black vinyl. And I only listened to this once prior to filming this video. Uh, but I listened to the single Blood Aside a whole bunch of times, which is a fucking great song. And the whole album itself is just packed with fucking riffs. This is your traditional Swedish death metal bloodbath album. Uh, you know, they're another one of those bands where at this point, you see the name bloodbath, you know what you're going to get. Nothing too experimental here. Not reinventing the wheel by any means, uh, but just doing Swedish style of death metal and doing it fucking well. Um, I think that Nick Holmes of Paradise Lost has found his niche in this band as their vocalist. Um, he, he's a great fit, in my opinion, and I think really came into his own on this album. Um, it's a really fucking great album. I, I am eager to give it more listens. I don't want to go too in-depth based on one listen through, but my initial impression is it's fucking good, and I'm going to keep listening to it, so... Bloodbath, Arrow of Satan is drawn. 
then I've got a couple of CDs to show. This is from Colt de Ghoul, and this is Sinister or Treading the Darker Paths. Take this out of the jewel case so you can take a look at that artwork without that nasty glare. Uh, Colt de Ghoul are a uh, Polish black metal band shrouded in mystery, um, but authors of some phenomenal albums, Haxon, Henbane, uh, Coven, or Evil Ways Instead of Love, that triple album just packed with storylines and fucking riffs. Uh, and then they come back here with Sinister, and I gotta say, this is quite the follow-up to Coven. And, you know, this is a, a shorter album, it's a little bit less than an hour, so you're not getting a fucking massive double, you know, triple LP of an album. Uh, but I think that that works in their favor this time around, uh, because you, <laughs> following an album like that, you're not going to outdo yourself. You're just not. Uh, but Sinister is a worthy companion, uh, a worthy addition to their discography. Uh, they play a brand of black metal that just sounds so horrific, so terrifying. I mean, and not in the way where it, like it shakes you to your core and you're fucking scared, but it's just, it's honestly downright fucking creepy. And they do this... Uh, using bass, using drums, his vocals are outstanding the way that he can, you know, articulate his voice to fit certain patterns and certain sounds. It's uh, really, truly using his voice as another instrument, and uh, I think that's what makes Colt de Ghoul a special band. Uh, so check this one out, out uh, 2018 release from Hell's Headbangers. <clears throat> And I want to talk about this one briefly just because so many of you were asking me my opinion on uh, the newest Deicide album, Overtures of Blasphemy. And um, I love Deicide. I loved their last album. Um, they really don't have too many albums that I'm not a fan of. But to me, this one is just your average death metal album. Um, you know, if it didn't have Deicide's name slapped on it, probably wouldn't have bought it. Um, the one thing that everyone keeps talking about is the lack of Glenn Benton's high-pitched vocals on this one. The high screams are non-existent. And that was one of my favorite things about Deicide, still is. The way that he would layer his low growls with the high screams on top of each other, creating this sort of possessed, demonic-sounding vocal style. And it's nowhere to be found on this album. And it makes these songs sound very dull, very run-of-the-mill. I don't think this is a bad album, but there's nothing about it that makes me say this is heads and tails better than you know anything else that's come out recently. Uh, it's certainly not DSI's best album. Uh, probably not their worst, though. Uh, so it's got that going for it. Uh, but... You know, I can't say that I've got this one, you know, repeat listens, keep pulling it off my shelf. It's just not happening with this one. But, uh, you know, not every album is going to be a fucking album of the year contender. You know, it's just another album to keep DSI relevant, which is cool to me. You know, it's cool that we're in 2018 talking about a new DSI album. That, to me, alone is, you know, worth it. But... That's all I've got for this video. Uh, lots of high praise for the albums that I talked about. Uh, let me know what you think about them. Uh, I'm not the only one who loves these albums, I'm sure. And I'm sure that there's some of you out there that uh, don't like them as much as I do, and that's fine too. Uh, one thing I will never stop stressing is to have a mind of your own and just always, always think for yourself. Don't let anyone else's opinion take hold over your own. You know, if there's one thing that I could just drill into people's heads, it's that. Just be yourself. Uh, be an individual. Think for yourself. Uh, I'm here just to show you guys some shit and tell you how I feel about it. That doesn't mean that you have to feel the same way about it. Uh, and if you disagree with it, that doesn't mean you have to be a dickhead about it either. But, you know, it's the internet. People are going to 
hide behind anonymity and say whatever they want uh, without fear of repercussion, but it comes with the territory. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all that cool shit. You guys are awesome. Until the next time, take care.